Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm glad you made it here. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that button and hit the ding dongs for all the notifications. I got something super awesome and unique today. We are going on a ram hunt, y'all. And we do have a sponsor to power us through this adventure today, so let me go ahead and introduce you to World of Warships. World of Warships came to me, they hooked me up with some sweet codes and let me start playing at a maximum level. It was like Game Genie back in the day for all y'all that are older than 30 years old. If you want to download the game for free and get hooked up with a bunch of freebies, use my code right down there in the video description. Use that code PLAYWARSHIPS2018 after downloading and you will get hooked up. You'll get 250 doubloons, which are in-game gold. 1 million credits, which are used for in-game currency. 3 days of premium so you can earn more experience points and extra credit in battle. And a premium Campbellton warship that has great torpedo range and damage. And also at a port slot, you can increase your fleet capabilities. This game is based around World War II naval battles. And in the game, you'll command a massive naval fleet and have some of the most amazing, iconic warships. It's a high action game, but you also gotta use your brain, you use some strategy. There's also seven million people that have downloaded it, so there's a little competition out there. If you download the game and you see Iron LFG during gameplay, that's me. Fun fact, it takes six months for developers to make those ships from scratch to go into gameplay. It's kinda like this table. <laughs> Still working on it. If you've already downloaded the game and used a freebie code before, don't try it here because it ain't gonna work. They've got systems in place, they're smart. So thanks to World of Warships for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get out in the outdoors and let's hunt us a ram. It is quite early in the day, y'all. I'm sitting over here off I-35 at the Slovaceks and the Little Czech Bakery is on the other side of the highway. I think I like the little Czech bakery a little better, to be honest. Nothing like starting a Central Texas morning with a kolache, some coffee, and going out into the hill country to enjoy some outdoors. Right now we're waiting on Mike to get over here, then we're gonna follow him out about an hour from here. The sun's gonna come up in about 45 minutes, so we don't have a whole lot of time. Probably not gonna make introductions just yet. We're gonna just get right into it. What up? You ready? Oh, man. Yeah, I'm ready, dude. Sounds good. First ram hunt ever, guys. Here we go. Hey, hush now, hush. You're gonna scare them. I've never been on a ram hunt. Got no clue. We, uh, zero clue. There's one that I'd really like you to shoot. There's another one, and he's a giant, and he's got a limp. So, if we find him, that's the one you can shoot. And then there's another one called Popeye. All right, y'all. We're about to go on a ram hunt. From what I've heard, this is more difficult than what I thought it was going to be. Mike thinks we can we get it done with archery. That's always way better in my opinion get your heart pumping we're in the hill country um there's tons of tons of mesquite trees and everything there's a couple of really really old rams and one just has a limp and he's kind of messed up that they just need to shoot them because you know they're gonna die pretty soon anyways some arrows on here we'll get to spotting and stocking for some rams this is gonna be fun huh y'all you got your caps on don't worry, I'm a professional YouTuber. All right, we are geared up, ready to go. Me and Mike are gonna go on foot. Yeah. Yeah. 
fighting. Actually, give me a chance to calm down for a second. Oh, you could hear that broadhead just whoosh, Yeah. Open up. Split his shoulder blade. Dang. That was cool. That was cool. Man. That was my first time ever spotting this dog. Really? Yeah. Dang, that's awesome. We got the one we were going after. Uh -huh. Everything. Shot him a little forward. A little forward. <laughs> Tongue's out. He's good. He's good to go. That's, look at that. That's in the heart. Man. Look at that ram, man. That's a good one. Dude, Mike. What do you think, dude? He's a good one. Look at that. That is beautiful, man. Me and Mike got some, uh, some sweet pics of the first ram. He's gonna help me cape one of these out. I think I'm actually gonna do a shoulder mount with this guy just cause he's pretty, man. It's so beautiful. So something you probably don't often see on these hunting shows with these rams is the eating of the meat. Cause it's not that great from what I hear. I wanna know if that's true or not. Me and Mike are gonna probably do some back straps. We'll try the best part. And Mike actually has a hookup down the road. Some people that make tamales, like some awesome tamales is what I hear. I'd like to try some of those, but I at least want to try this ram and see what it tastes like because uh, I know you guys want to see it. I'm curious. Don't want to waste an animal. This one definitely needed to be uh, taken down. He's getting later on in his career. Had a, had a shoulder injury early on. Not sure how he got that. Probably chasing around those girls with those big coins he's got there. Let's go clean this guy up, Mike, and let's see what he tastes like. Awesome. Oh, sorry, bud. Yeah, you want to play with that, huh? All right, y'all, we have made it over to the cleaning station. Look at this refrigerator. It's a walk-in fridge, so you can literally take your meat after you get done cleaning it. You put it right in there and preserve it just right away. And we're gonna start caping him. Mike's probably done a thousand of these. I'm gonna show you guys how he does it. Go 
going into this hunt, I was pretty much blind, guys. I had never met Mike before. And being a YouTuber and getting an invite from someone, you just never know what you're gonna get. The guy is awesome. He's just your total outdoorsman. He's been on so many hunts. He really helped me to get familiar with what the situation was gonna be. He was pretty much like a guide. Really reminded me a lot of myself when I was trying to get into the outdoor business at his age and being a guide. Mike is a really humble guy and I'm just gonna brag on him for a second. He makes these harnesses for binoculars and like I use mine for my rangefinder and my binoculars, but it's a harness, so it goes on your chest. You can see me wear it in the hunt. Genuine handmade leather, 100% made in the heart of Texas. So they're super high quality. They're gonna last a long time. It kind of has a little bit of a Texas look to it. Awesome tool, regardless if you're gonna be out hunting and you're doing a lot of glassing and things like that, but if you wanna get one from Mike, I'll leave it down in the description where you can pick these things up. Because he's just a genuine, hardworking young man with an entrepreneurial spirit for the outdoors. I respect that. Caping knife. So see how it's rounded? That right there is a caping knife. And you can get in around the eyeballs. Oh, that's it. That's bigger than what I thought. It's going to look good on the wall. That is awesome. That is a beautiful animal. Starting Basically just follow the jaw line down. You can start with the horns. You can start wherever you want. I just usually get the lips taken care of and then move up to the horns and the ears. So you go around, sometimes you have to get in there and just see how it's just breaking that skin off. Yep, just take your time right take at your the time base. around the base and then what you want to do, same on a deer, go around the base and then you want to make a V from here, down, here, down, so they can sew it. Dude, that's crazy, so that's for fighting. Yeah, that's what that's for. The cut right there I just made. Look at all the fat in there. These guys fight all the time. The back of their head is loaded with thick fur and it's just this like ball of fat. Yeah. Here we have the cape. Mike did an excellent job. And I also learned how to do this around the eye sockets and around the mouth, so thank you very much, Mike. Let's get this guy in a bag, and you can definitely smell the ramminess. If Mike was a crazy stalker, he totally could have just chopped me up right there and thrown me in that freezer, but he's not. We're on a high fence ranch today, y'all which I'm not gonna sit here and try to convince you it's not. The reason I got invited down to come shoot one of these rams is because they, they fight. Rams fight a lot. And when one of the rams or other exotics gets injured, who comes out? Oh yeah, it's old Mr. Coyote. Two rams on this property that have been fighting, they're injured, and some of them have already been eaten by these coyotes. Ram straps. Here, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You cut it, cut it into. Here we go. We've already had some some nice beef, but for dessert, we've decided it's time. It's time for some sheep. You know what? It seems pretty tender, does it not? Oh, you're going right in. Just no warning, going right in. Give me what you got on that. It's, I don't know. It's not the same as the steak? No. Well, you're not gagging. It's not terrible. Am I smelling it right now? Yeah. We are smelling it, right? The smell that I just got was the meat. Was it? No, it's not. The meat smells great. Yeah, it does. Dude, not bad. No. Not bad. Some of y'all might be thinking that we switched this out for beef. Absolutely not. Mike's dad cooked this with the fillets that we had, same spices and everything. Just some Allegro sauce, a little salt and pepper, that's about it. You know what? I'm get another bite. It's not terrible. It's really not terrible. It's hard after you've been cleaning it and then you've smelt it, but the meat is actually really good. I had this preconceived notion after hearing about it, that, oh, sheep's terrible, oh yeah, can't eat it, blah, blah, blah. Now I was thinking, oh, it's gonna be nasty like an odd dab. It's actually not, it's actually pretty darn good. A little chewy, but other than that. It's, it's just good. chewy. Sheep 
on the grill, pretty darn good. I will. <laughs> uh, one of the fishing freaks that I ran into, Cage, today. He's down here. We're gonna go hunt some hogs on his land. He has never tried sheep, and he's gonna get on his first sheep soon on a bow hunt. He's gonna be put on one. So uh, I think this is good warm up. Just to let him know that what what's coming. He's got some premium meats on the way. And I it. think this is a good warm up right here. Give it a whirl. How you feeling about it? Tasty. It's not bad, right? It's hard to chew. It's a hard little hard to chew, but it's not bad. It's just a little gummy. It's just a hair gummy. Fist bump. Hello. Okay, you're ready. You have the fuel of the ram now. So we have a general consistency consensus it's not just me it's actually good it is time to head into the night and go after the hogs man you know what guys that ram really wasn't that bad and i can't wait to taste them in some tamales so that's it for today's video y'all i got me a nice corsican mouflon mixed ram with some beautiful horns to go up into the tree house i got to meet a new avid outdoorsman friend named mike that also loves bass fish so we're probably going to be doing a little fishing and guess what i have got some red light spotting stalking to do on some hogs and some fishing so y'all go ahead and subscribe right here to the channel don't forget to hit the ding dongs for all the notifications and i hope wherever you are you're having a blessed day and i'll see you guys very soon on the next one